when people will take Krishna consciousness seriously is when they see that the exponents of Krishna consciousness have something intelligent to say. We're not going to, you don't trick people <laughs> into becoming devotees. You know, that, 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 that doesn't work. For, We're not going to trick. What are the word you use? Trick or what? Yeah, trick people, you know, to, to do something cunning that will force them to make a decision they didn't want to make, to move into a temple or to start chanting. You know, there may be some trickery, some, uh, in the early days of the movement, we used to do all kinds of crazy things to get people to take a book because we had this conviction of they just touch the book, it'll help them and so on and so forth. Well, that's all right. We made as many enemies as we did friends. Today, if we're going to make a significant contribution to to, to an improvement, the spiritual reformation of the society, you can't do it by by tricking people into buying a book. You have to you have to be able to address issues. You you have to be educated on those issues. You have to know what the themes are, what the challenges are. You have to be aware of the various solutions that are being proposed. And then when you're immersed in something, you can find what is that unique additional contribution that we can make through Krishna consciousness. That, that takes some effort. That's, you know, that's, that's the opportunity that we have now. This is a very amazing uh, thought because in the past, I used to write frequently on uh, for back to Goddard magazine on the column called Vedic Observer, which which address contemporary issues. And two of my books are on that theme: you know, timeless wisdom, current issues, and things like that. But then over a period of time, I started feeling that there is nothing nothing definitive or conclusive that we are actually offering because these are such complicated issues. And I can also say in two thousand five. I was much more, uh, you could say, much more narrow-minded or much more presumptuous about w- the scope of uh, conclusiveness that we can offer to issues. Now, maybe some humility has come in, although there's much more. But then I started feeling that uh, if we are not offering anything definitive, then what is the point of engaging in those issues? But what you are saying is that the purpose of engaging in these issues is not so much to give a definitive or conclusive understanding of that issue, but it is to enter into the discourse. And by that, say people, if people's minds will open to what, who we are and what we represent. Uh, now you're talking. Now you're talking. When we just get off our high horses, you know, we know, you don't know, we're going to clue you in. And just start talking like normal human beings again. That, well, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? What do you do in your podcast? And you're open to a dialogue, right? And all of a sudden, we're approachable. You know, nobody can, nobody can identify with someone who's, who's so fixed in ultimate truth that, you know, who even wants to be with them? <laughs> it... Look, we're sometimes so preoccupied with being ideal Vaishnavas that we forget to be warm-blooded human beings. The, 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 real, the real preaching work, the real, what, what, what's good preaching work? Become somebody's friend. Let them feel that they can trust you, that, that, you're, that you're interesting to talk to, that you're actually concerned uh, by them, their life. You know? uh, that's, um, that's such a gift. That's such a gift, especially now. There are so many broken hearts out there, so many people suffering from loneliness. They could care less what your position is on technology and science and, and artificial meat. They could care less. But if you take the time to sit with them and say, how are you doing? Is there something that you need? And uh, just just to be warm and, and friendly, they'll never forget you. And then maybe one day they might even ask, "What are those beads around you?" <laughs> you know, 
what what is this mad compulsion you know to it, it impose ourselves on people i don't understand that i don't understand it you know when chaitanya mahaprabhu was here yes he was a great scholar he he won people over not so much by sophisticated shastric references which he did do prakashananda saraswati Sarvabhoma and others, but because of the love in his heart, people were so thrilled just to be with him. And he 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 loved everyone. You know, they, they felt that he cared for them. You know, there was this totally smitten, you know, total love of Mahaprabhu for the person he was. Prabhupada was the same way. Yes, he was strong and he was philosophical. But that's not the side of him that I remember so much. I remember this person who was, he cared for me. He cared for everyone. Um, he was humble. He was funny. You know, you can love a human being. You, you can't love a philosophy. You can love a human being. 